I recently read through the entirety of Sweat and Soap. I didn't really plan on doing that, but I also tend to get engrossed in manga fairly easily. After reading through the absolute pain and horror that is Domestic Girlfriend, I stayed away from manga for a while. Honestly, that series left me with an empty feeling and I didn't want that again. I've been reading some one-offs here and there, like Girl Without a Face, and you should definitely pick this up by the way, it's really good. But I hadn't really delved into something long-running, or something more than like four volumes. <coughs> P-manga. <coughs> When I had worked up the courage to start something new, I was pleasantly surprised with my pick. Sweat and Soap is a very endearing series about smell fetishes. On the surface, I'm sure that sounds weird, but it's not really presented in a creepy way or anything. The story follows Asako Yaishima, who's had a sweating problem all her life, and she's been self-conscious about it the whole time. She works for her favorite toiletry company, Lilia Drop, as their soaps have helped hide her smell, at least in her mind. Kotaro Netori, who produces the majority of the newer soaps, walks by Asako as she's admiring the new soap on display. He's brought to a halt when he smells her. Her smell inspires him so much that he wants to smell her every single day from now on, much to Asako's dismay. She allows it though because Kotaro makes her favorite soaps. While the foundation for this story is a little bit shaky, the end result is pretty good and I'd honestly suggest you read it. But we're not here to review the manga. Oh no. We're here to look at the J-drama of the same name. When I first started reading the series, I went to see if there was an anime adaptation, and much to my surprise, there was a live-action adaptation instead. I've always found the notion of live-action manga adaptations a little bit odd, but I mean, if it's done well, there's no harm. I was originally watching the show alongside reading the manga, because I thought there would eventually be season 2 or something to wrap up the story. No way they could fit 11 volumes of story into 9 episodes, right? Oh, there's no season 2 planned? Oh, they do the whole story in just nine episodes? Well, I'm glad I decided to finish reading the manga before finishing up the last episodes, because not only would I have spoiled myself, but I would have gotten a much worse ending instead. So in order to fit three years of story into just nine episodes, they had to cut out a lot. Like a good 30 or 40 chapters go unrepresented here. Aside from Keita, we don't meet either Asako or Kotaro's families. I think this was definitely a missed opportunity as we miss out on probably the only part of the manga that almost made me cry. So Kotaro's mother is blind and has been for most of her children's adult lives. At Asako and Kotaro's weddings, spoilers, we see things from her perspective, just her wishing she could see the face of her son's bride, but only being able to see a blur. It was a beautiful moment, and I was just a little bit upset that they skipped over it. We also skip out on Asuka's first birthday, and the wedding, which took place over an entire volume, is condensed into maybe a minute long on the final episode. And then the credits roll. Even things like when they moved in together got uber sped up. In the manga, that was more than halfway through the entire run, but in the show, they start talking about it by like episode three. And then the next episode they say, well, it's been a year since we moved in together. There are multiple arcs throughout the show that while they cover it, they take you through it at breakneck speeds. But in the manga, these were volume long occurrences. I think unless you've read the manga beforehand, you're gonna get some serious whiplash watching this. Honestly, when the show is this short, it makes you question what they're spending their time on. For example, there's an entirely original episode that straight up never happened in the manga. It's based on the arc where Kotaro gets sick and loses his sense of smell, but in the manga I'm fairly certain he stayed in bed the whole time. In the drama, however, he comes to work, and because his sense of smell is gone, he can't see things normally. So to him, he's just wandering around in a dark, dilapidated building. Throughout the episode, he keeps misunderstanding things that Asako is doing, and he thinks she's cheating on him, when in fact, she was just preparing for their one-year anniversary. I would have much preferred an episode where they meet each other's families or something, but but I guess it's also interesting to see an entirely original plot just for this episode. Just feels a bit weird when they do that instead of doing the wedding properly, but oh well. You know what they dedicate multiple minutes to almost every single episode though without fail? Sex scenes. Now the manga itself is a little spicy and it does have sex scenes as well, but they never really go beyond a page or two. In the drama, they overstay their welcome. Each one is easily like three minutes long, and it's not even done tastefully. It's like they did 10 pounds of shrooms before they started and are having the worst trip of their lives. This goofy ass music that sounds like it belongs in a Disney theme park starts playing, and it puts me off in a very different way to how most sex scenes and dramas put me off. Like in a normal drama, it's just uncomfortable. But in this one, it's like the most ridiculous thing and I just can't take it seriously. Something I thought was interesting was how they decided to visualize Asako's scent. They just put a smoke machine in her shirt, but honestly, I think that's a pretty good way to show how Kotaro sees it. But then they ruin it by doing it every time there's a sex scene. Honestly, the show should have been split up into two seasons. There was certainly enough source material to do that, 
but in reality, the show is probably just promotional material for the manga. And it does that well. It leaves you wanting more from the main characters and that the manga can't provide. That's not to say the performances leave you wanting more, well, just by the virtue of the show being so short they do, because the casting was honestly perfect. Each character felt true to the original story, even though like half the cast had their roles diminished to a degree. The show is honestly pretty great. The casting choices were perfect, it just desperately needed more episodes. And while that's probably a good thing, it doesn't help to say that now, since the show is already over. So give the show a chance. It might surprise you, or it might leave you wanting more. If that's the case, you can check out the manga, which fills in all the gaps. Or if you don't want to jump into a half-completed story, start with the manga, and if it leaves you wanting more, check out the show. They're both very, very good, and I can't recommend either enough. Though also the opening and ending slap, I'm not gonna lie. I recently started a podcast with my friend Richie, and the first episode is live now. In it, we discuss everything from Beyblades to why SAO is mid, to even some very sus things we saw happening at a concert. Did you like, scream, let it rip? Yes. Um... Goku! Oh my god, oh, bro. Damn, Put Goku bro. back up. She starts grinding the fuck out of this guy. She like reaches his hands like down his pants and starts giving him like a, an HJ. I'm trying to like watch the Young Bay concert and I'm, there's people fucking doing it right next to me. Link in the description. You can either watch on YouTube or listen on Spotify.